Damon Bell, the new sound of Nova Mornings in 2023 is Early Breakfast. How good is this? Ben Lehman Bell from 6am and Jody and Hazy from 7. The best time ever. You guys are so funny. I'm happy to hear your voice, Jody. I'm loving the new show. You guys are doing great. New spark there. Jody and Hazy. It's the new sound of Nova in 2023. Good morning, Adelaide. Did that woman just say we're loving the nude shots or the new show? Uh, I think it was a combination of both. <laughs> we're loving the nude show. <laughs> so every Friday, just yeah. to give you a bit of a picture of what happens behind the scenes, we yeah. do the show completely nude. Yeah, it's great. I love it. So there's no live stream, I don't think, like 5AA. In fact, I think that Will and Pembo are nude as well on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Hey, what about um? Have you read the big story this morning? Globe Derby Park is it Derby or Derby? I think it's Derby. Derby or Derby. But that's where you go to see the dish lickers. Yeah. yeah. So that's in $3 million worth of debt. I can't get my head around that. I mean, it's one of those situations where I'm like, I've never been no. there, but I don't want it to disappear. I, I still want it there. Uh, why? Just but I, I've never invested a cent into it. Because it's comforting to you <laughs> to know that yeah. out north there's like dish lickers running around exactly. chasing after a rabbit. At some stage, uh, we don't do that anymore, Jared. Let's oh, not be confident. Let's no. com- not be uh, controversial. It's not a real rabbit. It's a fake rabbit. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, but I need to know that <laughs> it's there if I need it. <laughs> I, I never said it was a real rabbit. We said a rabbit. <laughs> it's very controversial within the industry. You know what they should do? They should just get two greyhounds, get the developer, and just say, go for it, and let's double down. Double the debt or nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Off you go, boys. <laughs> go. Bang. Six million dollars in debt. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh. Triple or nothing? Triple or nothing. Oh, God. Have fun with that. Hey, we've got a big show coming up. Judge Jody is back. Uh, we've got an email about unrequited love. It's very sad. But also, it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, I thought that sounded like it was a good story. No. <laughs> Ask us anything as well. This is your opportunity at breakfast at nova919.com.au to ask us any question that you would like. And also, the worst segment in the world is also back. Yes, me tweets. Ah! Uh, so what we do is that we just compile all the solid feedback that's come through via the week and then we just put it together in a nice little package and then we watch Jody Oddy turn into a little ball oh, no. and hide in the corner of the studio it's rocking back and forth. It's the best way to finish a Friday just it in the is, fetal position. Just to get you in the right frame of mind for your Saturday. <laughs> Weekend, so I'm going to be real depressed around my kids on no, Saturday and Sunday. Good. Thanks guys. Jody and Hazy's Ask Us Anything. Just going through that little process, Jodes, where we're getting to know you and you are getting to know us. So what we thought we'd do is get some questions through. You can jump on social media, breakfast at nova919.com.au or at nova919, at Jody and Hazy. Send us through some questions. Morning, producer Sean. Uh, good morning. Oh, and the questions are flowing through and mm. we are loving them. So uh, make sure you keep sending them through. You ready for question one? Yes, no. as, long as, as long as the question isn't from my original boss uh, at Channel 7 when I started doing my first sort of news packages and he genuinely asked me why I'm so shit. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll scrub that question Scrub that one out, yeah. please, because I didn't know how to answer back then. I still don't. Don't worry, we were all asking the same question around at Channel 10. Why is this guy so bad? <laughs> I don't know, it's just I've got a gift for doing the wrong things. <laughs> all right, well, we'll go on with question one, and this one's from Dan from Salisbury East. What does Dan want? Morning, guys. I wasn't a Nova listener until this year and surprisingly really enjoying the show. Surprisingly? (laughs) Now, he knows that everyone in Adelaide is all about what school you went to, but he's more of a car guy, so he would like to know what your first car was. Oh, okay. I purchased, because my parents were very big on not just handing me things on a platter, I purchased a white Ford Laser hatchback. Yes. Um, The only problem was the locks didn't work, like, on the front and passenger side. So if I ever wanted to get in my laser hatchback, I had to climb through the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's so... And how long did you have this car for? Oh, a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> good for slick exits, <laughs> yeah. weren't they? How about you, Hazy? First car. I used to, by the end of it, I'd just run up <laughs> and, like, jump in and roll through Superman the Superman through the back window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first car was a 1989 Ford Fairlane, which was a hand-me-down from mum and dad. Um, it had this little thing where even though it said you had 40 k's to go, you're actually out of fuel. Right. So twice I ran out of petrol. Okay. Um, also had a little sign on the back of the car that said, when the Fairlane's rocking, don't come and... No, you didn't! No, I definitely didn't because not one female would get into that car. It was also your parents' car. That's weird. Mm. 
It also got stolen from me in La Perouse in Sydney. Oh, sometimes that's a good thing. And ended up, ended up burnt out, which oh. was a celebration because we got insurance money. Exactly right. <laughs> <Good stuff. laughs> I got five grand for it. Yeah. Well, it was worth eight dollars. <laughs> celebration, Sean. So I'm thank you to my mate who thank you to my mate who burnt the car for me. I'm joking. No, he's joking. joking. Uh, the insurance counselor after you now. <laughs> Our next question is from Cara from Cumberland Park. I'm sure you guys having kids don't use these words, but if you could use one swear word for the rest of your life, <laughs> what would it be? Ooh. You first, Jody. No, you go first. No, ladies first. No. It's probably the F word for me because I'm not a man of high intellectual property. <laughs> Therefore, I need words like that to better explain myself. <laughs> so it's helping me to communicate with my fellow humans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of <laughs> balls. <laughs> That'll work. Perfect. All right, question number three is from Sophie from Kidman Park. Guys, I'm loving the show. Because both of you spend so much time together, have you ever had a dream about each other? And if so, what was the dream about? Oh, my God. I've dreamed about you two. I bet you have, (laughs) Sean. I bet you dreamed about Hazy more than me. (laughs) Stop unbuttoning your shirt, Sean. For goodness sake, we're trying to have some fun, but not too much fun. We were both in your dream. Both in my dream, yeah. Were we a thruple? No, it wasn't sexual at all. Oh, it wasn't sexual. No, oh, no. sorry. Yeah. Why did I immediately no. think it was? <laughs> it was a fun work dream. Oh, okay. I've had a dream with you, and this is my this is my. So let me finish. This is my nightmare, which I, I have, and I've been since I've been working radio that I wake up like halfway through the morning. Yeah. But for this particular dream, I've woken up, <laughs> and you've woken me up, and you're like, "Where are you? We're supposed to be doing uh, work at Nova, and it's like seven thirty. But then, for whatever reason, you carry me out of bed. <laughs> I had that dream Did about you? two and a half weeks ago. Right. So, good for you. So Carrying was, me, nice and strong. Hang on, were we sleeping in the same bed or I was standing next to the bed and I've picked you up and carried you out? No, so what's happened... I've tapped you on the shoulder? What's, so what's happened? happened is I'm late to work and you've driven to my house, knocked on the door, got me out of bed and then carried me to work. That's not a dream. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that happened on day one. And our final question is from Kelly from Clapham. Now, you've been with your team for a month now. Who do you think is the Beyonce of the group? I don't even know what that means. Ooh, someone Ooh. who's got a bit of sass. Yeah, someone oh. who's a bit diva-ish. Uh, a, bit, a bit extra, so, so they say. Can I answer this question? No. Mm, no, you it's cannot. about you. Can we answer this? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do this at the same time? Sure. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Producer, Producer Sean. Sean. Yes, <laughs> look at him. There's so much sass. That was my question. That was my answer too. <laughs> There she is. Oh, court is in session. The judge just needs to put her glasses on so she can read this email. There she is. A bit premature with the hammer there. Yeah. He's up on the hammer there, judge. <laughs> Story of your life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean, Sean? <laughs> Producer Sean? You'll work it out after the show. You Dear judge. Be true. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Judge. Dear Judge Jody, I'm in need of your help. Over a year ago, I came out of a seven-year relationship which ended as my ex couldn't settle down or confirm a future between us. After around eight months of single life, I met an amazing guy who was funny, caring, and I just get excited speaking to him. That's how I feel about you every day. That's a spark, mean. isn't it? I just can't wait to see Hazy. <laughs> We've been taking things quite steady and six weeks ago we moved in together and so far everything is going well. My dilemma is after dating him for that long, for six months, and now living together, my boyfriend is still yet to say, I love you. Oh, okay. Six months, plenty of opportunity. They're living together. Uh, She says, for me, I felt that connection three months ago. I've just turned 33 and don't want to waste any more time on guys who aren't serious. Should I bring this up with him or should I wait for it to organically happen? Judge Joni, I need your help. As my biological clock is ticking. Sarah from Paralawi. Do you know what? This is... I hear this from girlfriends all the time. Do you? About men who can't say I love you. Mm. You're an interesting bunch, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> is what, that what you guys what, talk about, what, is it? What, women as a species? We're <laughs> interesting? Goodness me. It's just funny the different conversations when I catch up with my mates. We talk about... NFL and mm. crazy things like that. Well, maybe you should talk about the fact that you don't know how to say the words I love you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm good at saying I love you, but six months. 
How long? It can't be rushed. How long did it take? Well, my initial thoughts, six months is too long. Like, if you don't fit, you know straight away. Like, I know that sounds like such a cliche, but you know what you know. Ooh. Can I ask you how long it took you to tell Kara that you loved her? Uh, I said it on the first night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spook you, Kara, but I think I love you. Uh, and she said, go away, creep. <laughs> and let's sort this out another day when you haven't had twelve hundred beers. That's, that's no. I reckon. I reckon maybe. I can't remember. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe around about six months. Really? He, he can't be rushed. That's ridiculous. Yeah, because uh, maybe he does feel like that, but he doesn't want to spook her as well. He doesn't know that she's saying she's waiting for him to say it. So there's a a weird little zone that they're in right now. Okay, let's go to Abby in the newsroom. Abs, what do you think? Six months too long, isn't it? Love you, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Hazy. I said we said it on the first day we started working together, didn't we? Yeah. Um, I think it's weird. Number one, that they're living together and they haven't said it. But, mm. but mm. as I get older, I realise actions speak louder than words. Don't oh, they? So, what is he like? Is he texting her? Message me when you get normal. You know, whatever. Like, then maybe he's doing it through actions instead of words. But it's weird that they haven't said it and they're living together. Yeah. So wise, Abby. Isn't she good? This is unbelievable. Thank God she's here because if it was just you and me, <laughs> we'd be in all sorts yeah, of you'd, well, We'd be having ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Children. <laughs> 13, 24, 10. We need some jurors' help on this one. Living together after six months, he still hasn't said, I love you. She obviously wants to have kids because she's talking about her biological clock. Is she wasting her time? Should he have said it by now? Zoe from Mount Barker. Good morning, Zoe. What do you think? Six months, they're living together. Should he have said, I love you by now? Uh, it's personal preference, but for me, it would 100% be a red flag. My partner and I, or my current fiance and I, told each other after a couple of months and we're now getting married, you know, we've bought a block of land, all those sorts of things. For me, 100% red flag. Okay. Ooh. All right. Thank you, Zoe. You're in the running for free for 23. Graham from Smithfield. Let's have a bloke's perspective here. Should he have uh, said... Oh, g'day, Graham. <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> Should he have said, I love you by now? I don't think so. I think it's you've got a weird thing to the trait, but also, do you want him to say it just because of the pressure, or do you want to see him because he means it? Right. Yes. You know, I mean, I've been, I've got engaged to my wife after six weeks. Did you? And we've oh. been, no, we, I, I would have married her on the same, the day I met her, and she said the same thing, and we've been together 33 years. Mm. Okay. That's the thing, Graham. Well, you know, when you know, you know, don't you? Oh, I knew straight away. As soon as I saw her, um, you know, I knew she was the one and because, I don't know, she, I just knew. There you go. Graham, Scottish, yes? No, Newcastle, thank you. Oh, no, I've offended you. Oh, I was dear. trying to go for Scottish because my wife is Scottish, but um, um, have a good day then. Don't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's go to Kate from Hackney. Hey, Kate, what do you think? Should he have said I love you by now? Oh, she should just leave. Seriously, they've moved in together. It's not like they, you know, are planning to separate because they've moved in. He's not doing it. They see you. Kate's, Kate's brutal. Brutal. Oh, we're no, done here. No mucking around with Kate. No. You've got to respect that, though. No. Tammy from Shadow Park, what do you think? Good morning. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, Tammy, your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are this month isn't really that long when you think about it. And you don't know what his past is either. He, his past? Oh, yeah, maybe he's been burnt. Maybe he's been hurt. Ooh. Who yeah. hurt him? Uh, I'm not saying don't give up a red flag. I'm saying Bev is not open-minded. That maybe there's something else going on to why he doesn't want to say that. It's yeah. a good point. Good empathy from Tammy. Uh, you go. You've got a tough decision to make, Joe. Mitchie's getting involved on the Instagram. He says, hi, uh, just listening to your chat... Why is this guy in hot water if the girl hasn't said I love you either? Oh, a little role reversal. That's good. Maybe Sarah's not being brave either. Mm. Okay. I'm going to take into account this man's background as well. He may have been burnt in the past. He may be gun shy. Maybe his ego's getting in the way. Maybe he's scared that she won't say it back. So I'm going to recommend that Sarah sticks in there just for a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Give it three more months if he hasn't said it. Get out, Sarah. Okay. Run for the hills. There you go. Final rule. <laughs> Stick it through Sarah. Happy with that? Yes. Just give him, just give him a little bit, little bit longer. I like that. I think we can all work with that. Yeah, three more months, and then if he hasn't said it, go. Go, girl. <laughs> Run for the hills. Yes, exactly right. right. <laughs> Thoughts, get involved. We'd love your feedback. 0400-919-919. The biggest breaking story this town has ever seen. This is huge. Huge. Jody's
Juice. Words Radio. Uh, Jody, take over, please. Who cares, mate? Um, I can't talk about Netflix without this sound effect. Oh, yeah. How many times, ask yourselves at home, how many times have you heard that in yeah. your lifetime? Doo-doo. And then you know. Yeah. You're about to settle in yeah. and waste your life. And then it's like the countdown, 10, 9, 8, do you want to watch another episode? Oh, I should go to bed, i got to get up early. And then next minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's only another 55 minutes of my life. <laughs> exactly. It's not going to hurt me tomorrow. It is midnight though. Uh, this is bad news if you're a bit of a tidy and you like to share your password. Netflix, Netflix plans to bar users from sharing passwords for free by the end of March of this year, according to a recent company announcement in a letter to shareholders. You share yours? Yes, I do. This is good news. Good news for our household. Oh, why? Because we've got uh, a brother-in-law who oh. will go by the name of Mickey Goonan. <laughs> <laughs> for confidentiality purposes, though, let's call him Mickey G. Yeah. Um, and he has our password, and the amount of times I've tried to get on Netflix, and it says, nah, this particular user is using your account, and then I'll call him and text him, and he won't respond, <laughs> and I'm locked out of my own Netflix account. <laughs> You're oh. paying ten ninety nine a month for your brother-in-law to use your Netflix. Oh, jeez. That's outrageous. Yep. At least go halves. That's uh, what I've been saying for a long time. And pick up your phone, Mickey G, when yeah. Hazy wants to use his Netflix account. <laughs> uh, John Cena and his wife, Shay, are in Sydney. That's exciting, isn't it? Yes. The couple were seen walking hand in hand through the airport while carrying their luggage. Well, that's what you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some fans were seen admiring the couple as they left the airport together for their first time, for their time down under. I saw John Cena in the um, Hilton foyer. Yeah. And it was the weirdest thing, because I didn't really know who he was, but someone's like, oh, that's John Cena. And then he's playing the piano, like the big grand piano that was in the foyer, and, but he had like all these minders around him, and they were like, don't go near him. <laughs> he just wants privacy. I'm like, oh, if you want to be low-key, why are you playing a grand piano? <laughs> yeah. Why are you it's doing It's not very it? subtle, is no, it? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, Prince Andrew has been booted from Buckingham Palace. The most extraordinary thing about this story, so they've kicked him out because they're doing like a $644 million renovation. Um, but apparently Prince Charles has said, you're not coming back. So he needs to find alternative accommodation. But the weird thing about this is that Prince Andrew has a heap of teddy bears. So apparently the Duke likes to surround himself with five bears and other stuffed animals, each in a specific position. So... <laughs> There's a lot of alarm bells with Prince Andrew, isn't there? <laughs> so if you're swiping on a dating app and Prince Andrew comes up, just, uh, no. just be careful. Swipe swipe left or right? Swipe which way, left. Which way is the... I um, don't like this way. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but left. the way that it deletes him... Left, thanks, <laughs> Abby. Thank you, Abby. Thanks, Abby. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Sounds like someone swiped left a few times before. <laughs> you got teddy bears at home too, Abby? Or? Maybe that's why I'm still single. <laughs> Maybe I should take that picture off my profile. <laughs> So, um, Don't offend the teddy bears, though. <laughs> Staff have said that a teddy bear, there's a teddy bear holding a heart as well as hippos and cushions with daddy ducks and prints on them. Oh, my gosh. Nothing to see here. Sort of feels like he's the type of operator who, uh, during some kind of intimate moment, would say, call me Prince. <laughs> Doesn't he? Or Daddy. Or, or Daddy. Or, or Dukey Prince or Daddy. Something. Oh, God. Or Dukey. Anyway, to something much more wholesome, uh, there's a new Bluey track coming out this month. It's an album. Um, so it's called Dance Mode, a record of 17 songs. It's coming soon, but the first single and title track currently has a release date of today. Sing along, please. Mum! <laughs> Do you know the next words here, Jody? You, go, you got this? You ready? Dad! Dad, yes. Isn't this just a powerhouse? Bingo! We're going to do the whole thing, it would seem, Sean. Yes. Yep. I demanded it. Dad! Oh! <laughs> Why? Why? You've heard it a million times. Why did you I, mess it up? I've watched it. Yeah, I would have watched it a million times. Yeah. So, and the strange thing as well is that we're talking about Bluey and how much we love it. We're talking about the family and everything. Um, and producer Sean was like, yeah, it's, I love it. It's such a good series. You don't have kids, You don't have mate. children. So why are you watching Why it? are you watching Bluey? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Look, it's based in my hometown in Brisbane. So that's oh, why. It's no excuse, yeah, mate. Sure. It's, no excuse. it's a kid show. I watch it for, you know, what we have to talk about on air. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I okay. watch Bluey. And I thought Prince Andrew was a weirdo. <laughs> WhatIf.com helps Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel, all before you can say, Bricky Buffet. Jump on the WhatIf app and get started. WhatIf, it's Aussie for travel.
Well, Hazy, you're new here to Nova and you need to tread very carefully because you have quite the reputation for getting people's names wrong. Oh, so you you want to go into a situation, a social situation with confidence? Yeah. And you want to address people by their name mm. because obviously it's easy just to call everyone mate. Yeah. So I try and get on the front foot. Yeah. But if you stuff it up, yeah. it, it, it stays with them, I think, for a lifetime. For example, if I was calling you... I don't know, Jemima instead of Jody for a long time, you're yeah. going to remember that, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to think you're arrogant <laughs> at the same time. My husband and I have a system. Um, if we're in a social situation and I say, oh, hi, how are you going? This is my husband, Greg. He knows that's his cue that I don't know the name of the person that we're speaking to. So he'll go, <laughs> hey, I'm Greg. And then only on a very rare occasion, they won't receive yeah, it. And then we're both in the dark. They should pick it up as well. <laughs> and then afterwards, when they introduce themselves, you go, oh, sorry, I was just about to introduce you. Oh, sorry. But you jumped into the job for me. Exactly. We have a mutual friend at Channel 7. <laughs> She's one of my best friends in the world. And she took great delight in telling me a story about how hey, you, for many years... Many years mixed up someone's name. Oh, my gosh. And I don't know if this is my fault or the person who I've been calling the wrong name for so long. It's their fault for not correcting me. But, yes, probably about three years, uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve, um, who, for whatever reason, I was calling Paul. It's not a go-to <laughs> name, is it? So the person you're talking about, a mutual friend, his name is uh, Chantel, and up near her office, and then one time I walked past... Um, Paul at the time and said, thanks for that, mate. Good on you, Paul. Um, be back in a second. And Chaz is absolutely losing it. W what is going on here, Chantel? <laughs> Paul, his name's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, you're kidding. Oh. For years, yeah. I've been calling him Paul. And he'll go, I'll go, morning, Paul. he go, morning, Hazy. <laughs> Just takes it. Accepts it like he'd accepted it. So, I don't know who's in the wrong here, first and foremost. Well, okay. But um, your form has transferred over to Nova 919. Tell everyone what happened. It's already <laughs> happened. So, I met a lot of people, a lot of people at the uh, Nova Christmas party. I'm banking all these names. So did Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe. Still hung over a little bit a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, and then a young man by the name of Jono, who I met, um, who's... Fantastic young man. Yeah. He works up at AA for a little bit and yep. a real likable bloke. Yeah. So he came in one morning to fix something and I've jumped on the front foot and gone, there he is. Get out of there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I haven't been this embarrassed for a long time. He started having conversation and fixing something in here and mid-conversation went, yeah, da-da-da, um, it's it's Jono, by the way, uh, da, 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 and then carried on. <laughs> it's Jemima and Hazy on Nova. <laughs> Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this daisy. It's Friday. Woo, let's celebrate. We'll take a little trip down memory lane. Friday, 27th of January. We'll start in 1984, Jodes. Michael Jackson suffered second degree burns when his hair and face caught on fire during a Pepsi commercial shoot. What they're saying is it was lucky that it happened in 1984 and not 10 or 15 years later. Uh, where his face wouldn't have burnt, it would have melted. <laughs> it would have been gross and very scary for the children. 1992, the big day out debutted on the Australia Day holiday in Sydney. I say debutted. Do you remember when Jess Mowboy said debut instead no. of debut? No. Read off the teleprompter said debut. Oh, God, Jess. <laughs> Oh, jeez. It's very Ron Burgundy of her, isn't it? <laughs> I was. <laughs> She's such a beautiful person. 1985, 15th Space Shuttle, the 51C Mission Discovery 3, returns to Earth. Nice. And good on it for coming back home. Mission <laughs> and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to the Department of Defense mission. Sometimes that doesn't happen. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't happen. 2004, Yeah, the single released by Usher featuring Lil Jon and Ludacris who won a Grammy Award for Best Rap and Sung Collaboration in 2005 and there was a Billboard Song of the Year in 2004 and I think we all remember the efforts of Lil Jon just every few seconds ago. Okay! <laughs> Thanks for your contribution on that one, Lil Jon. Have a Grammy. <laughs> Here's a Grammy. What? <laughs> 2007, Serena Williams beats Maria Sharapova at the Oz Open. First time the tournament used Hawkeye system for official line calls. Yeah, Serena Williams convincingly. She is the 2007 Australian Open champion. I loved how back in the day as well that some of the tennis players would still argue and be like, well, that's wrong. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. 
It's like genuine evidence. Yeah. You can't go against that. And the number one song in Australia on January 27, 2005 was hung up by Madonna. Ageless is Madonna. To a, to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> Good nick back in 05, though. Oh. Mean tweets. Joe's feedback's good. I'm not about it. You're all about it. No, no, I have a very sensitive heart and soul, so I don't <laughs> like this stuff. You, on the other hand, worked with cane corns for many years, so you're very attuned to some solid feedback. He taught me how to embrace this sort of stuff. Okay. All right, uh, here's a collection of this week's mean tweets, Joe's. Okay, yeah, go enjoy. on then. Enjoy. Yikes, this is what it's come to on Nova, eh? <laughs> oh, no thanks. Nightmare. Be funny. <laughs> Boring. Just play music. I wake up at 5.55am and go back to sleep at 7am. Oh! Jody and who the f- Good luck. <laughs> Radio stations have turned to shit this year. <laughs> Why are we listening to Nova? <clears throat> Yawn. Everybody hurts sometimes. <sighs> oh, it's just, okay. It really makes setting the alarm at 4.30 a.m. worthwhile. It's just a it? bit of fun. That's what it is. It's good feedback. <laughs> you know what? Just take it on board. I think he got off uh, pretty scot-free there. Can you stop being boring? No, I know. <laughs> um, it's Jody and... Who? Who cares? <laughs> After a little bit of uh, feedback, Abby, um, it's been a solid tennis season, has it not? <laughs> how, how do you is feel... It's nearly ab- over yet. How do you feel about the Oz Open? Uh, look, great, but... A little stressful for those of us who don't cover it all day, every day. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's not, there, there's not a lot of natural names that roll off the tongue. No, there's there? not. No. I mean, you've got your John Millmans, yeah. of course. But he, uh, unfortunately, easy. John doesn't go as well as we would hope every time. <laughs> he doesn't go <laughs> deep into the Oz Open, does he? Do you have a little feedback <laughs> session, Abby, and just go through some of your little names here? We've uh, compiled. Yeah, go on then. Just some of your work over the past two weeks. Compiled a little list. Can we just go back from the last week? <laughs> save my name, save my name. World number one, Iga Swiatek, is looking to take Good. the vacated title left by Ash Barty. Rinki Hijikata and John Ooh. Millman won their matches in five sets. Yeah. Stefanos to Zitsipas. <laughs> and Rafael Nadal have all progressed to round two on day one. Jason Kubler and John Millman and Olivia Gadecki all recording wins. Mm-hmm. With a straight sets win against Roberto Cabellas Baena. Wins also for Alexi Popperin, Alex Dimonor, while local hopeful Thanasi Kokonakis had his match delayed due to rain. It's good. To the court this morning, leading Fabio Fognini two sets to love. Good. Alexander Vukic will resume their match. <laughs> Coco Golf beat Emma Raducanu in their first pro match, 6-3, 7-6. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think you did. did pretty well. Uh, but uh, Stefanos, Sitsipas uh. really got you, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> T- well, th- he what did you say? To sit this Yeah, well, I thought there was the. Because t- I'm not even going to try and defend that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Anyway, Aussie no, Open no. wraps up this weekend. But you know what? Like Jodes. Yeah. Daniel Medvedev. You said Daniel. Oh, I, call, I did call him Daniel. No, that's a fair call, Abby. Thanks for bringing and that up. And how's Kayla Estinas going to? <laughs> there you go. We Abby won Jody Zero. We all have our cross to bear. Just Abby. a bit of feedback, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, some reverse feedback. Nice. Love that. It is fair to say that the Australian Open has been your big wedgie. So, you yeah. know, in honour of that, let's give away some tickets to the Big Wedgie. All right, 132410. If you'd like some tickets to the Big Wedgie, uh, call us right now. Nova presents the Big Wedgie inflatable water park open all summer at West Beach, West Beach Parks. Book your tickets now at bigwedgie.com.au. Perfect day for it as well. Top of 37 yeah. degrees. If you missed Jody's Juice before, we spoke about the fact that Bluey is going to release an album and the first track is going to be dropped today off that album. You had a conspiracy theory about Louie, didn't you? Yeah, there's a few little things uh, running around on social media, media that apparently Chili, of course, is Mrs. Louis Hiller, mm-hmm. um, is having an affair with Lucky's dad, who is a next-door neighbour. Because there's a lot of moments throughout uh, some of the shows where they're very flirtatious. Yeah, okay, mm. I know. 
Um, well, we got a text message on the Bluey conspiracy theory. Oh, uh, what about this? They say that Bandit and Wendy are having an affair, which then leads on to another theory that Chili and Bandit are swingers. <laughs> Due to the pineapples in there. What does that mean, due to the pineapples in there? I don't understand that. Oh, mm. this is your area, scarily, producer, producer Sean. Sean. What does that mean? Well, apparently, if you put your pineapples out the front of your house, says the man who's wearing, says the man is wearing a pineapple shirt. <laughs> it just means that you're open to different scenarios. Oh. Right. So I've heard. Well, there you go. <laughs> As producer Sean <laughs> slithers away. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. Well, there you go. Who would have thought oh, that... Uh, uh, the heels were a bunch of dirty birds. <laughs> hey, next week on the show, Ricky Lee is going to join us uh, to talk all things Oz Idol. Maybe she'll put you to the test. You're a singer. Yeah, look, I can uh, bang out my best Ricky Lee hit, maybe. Yeah, okay. And and the fact that this gig mightn't last very long for you means you need to really pursue your career. Uh, all the latest on maths as well. Ask us anything. We're going to do that again. We've been doing that for a little while, haven't we, guys? Yes, it's yeah. going well. It's good yeah. fun. Yeah. And we've got Harry Styles, ticks and flights and accommodation to his gig as well. There you go. It's, it's all happening. It's been a very, very big week. So everyone who's joined us, thank you so much. We'll do it all again next week. We're having a lot of fun. Fun, meeting so many new people. Yep. It's just really, really good. Isn't it? You enjoying yourself, Dal? I am. Oh. And it's Nova. Have a great weekend. See ya. Adelaide's Jody and Hazy.